what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a supernatural horror film, Body Sop 19. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie starts with Chan, an engineering student who suffers from gruesome nightmares. Chan wakes up from a bad dream in an opera house. He dreams of a man mutilating someone beside a black cat. Afterward, he sees a bruise-shaped hand on his wrist, but it disappears after a while. He suddenly feels uneasy with the song the singer is singing, so he goes out to breathe fresh air. When the show is over, he rides a cab home with a black coat that he found on the stairs. When he's about to get out of the cab, he notices that his wallet is missing. So he checks the black coat, and luckily, it has a wallet with money, which he uses to pay for the cab. He smells something off in the kitchen, so he decides to throw the trash outside. He notices the garbage bag moves, and when he checks it, a distorted small face screams at him. Startled, he goes back inside the house. The light goes out, so he gets a flashlight, and points it toward the strange noise. He's so shocked that he jolts backward and flops down the couch, as he sees a black cat biting a severed human hand. The next scene starts with Lusa, a psychiatrist who is waking up her husband, a medical professor at a university hospital. After their short talk, Lusa goes to work. Afterward, she receives a call from her husband, who is looking for his wallet. She advises him to look for it in his office, because he might have left it there. While the professor is looking for his wallet, one of his student residents, named Jib, arrives to inform him that the students are already waiting for him. When the professor throws a stack of documents, his family picture almost falls on the ground. Luckily, Jib catches it on time. The professor's mood darkens as Jib goes to ask about Darai, a hypnotist in their school. As the professor closes the drawer, his family picture drops on the floor and the glass breaks into pieces. Because of Darai's attitude and frequent absenteeism, her students want to withdraw from her class. But what's intriguing is that the professor seems bothered when talking about Darai. That night, Chan is talking with his sister, who is a medical student at the same university hospital. After a while, Chan asks about the car that's parked outside. His sister's mood changes, as she answers that it belongs to the owner of the house. She then asks when he's going to look for a dormitory, because the house owner doesn't know that he's staying there with her. Aside from the fact that Chan doesn't have enough money to pay for rent, he also wants to be with his sister because they only have each other, since their parents already passed away. Chan's sister asks him to prepare the shrimp. Suddenly, he starts to hallucinate, and sees blood coming out of the shrimps. He panics and cuts his hormone let-go finger, causing it to bleed heavily. She brings him to her university hospital, and secretly gives him first aid. As she goes out to look for a needle in nylon, a nurse arrives and brings Chan to Jib to be treated. Jib notices something odd after he conducts several basic tests on Chan, so he tells him not to use his hormone let-go fingers so frequently, and advises him to see the psychiatrist, Lusa. Chan insists that he doesn't need to see a psychiatrist just because of an injured finger. On their way home, Chan confronts his sister about her secretive attitude at the hospital. She explains that she might lose her job if the staff catch her using the hospital's stuff without permission. His sister then sees the calling card where Jib wrote Luce's number. Chan then complains about the doctor's advice for him to see a psychiatrist when he only cut his finger accidentally. His sister looks worried, asking if he's having difficulty sleeping. He confesses that he's actually having recurring nightmares. His sister encourages him to consider the doctor's advice. He's hesitant at first, but eventually agrees. That night, Chan wakes up from another nightmare and sees a fetus crawling. He peeks under the bed, but it's nowhere to be found. When he looks up, a scary ghost with long, thick hair attacks him. It wraps its hair around Chan's neck, so in retaliation, Chan strangles it. It's then revealed that he's hallucinating again, and this time he's strangling his own sister. He's very sorry, so the next day, he goes to see Lusa in her clinic. The following day, before Chan leaves the house, he gets money out of the wallet in the black coat, whispering that he will return it right away. In the clinic, Lusa is telling Jib that she would like to know who Chan is, but Jib says that the information may affect her husband's career. Lusa ends the call when Chan arrives. She looks scared, and it seems like she's bothered by Chan's presence. Lusa begins to ask questions. Chan shares that he suffers from frequent nightmares. Lusa holds Chan's arm, trying to comfort him with her muscles, but he's just offended, thinking that Lusa believes he's insane. While under hypnosis, Chan sees a woman blackmailing a man that she'll expose their intimate pictures to his wife if he leaves her. At the end of his dream, the woman reveals her name is Dar Rai, and he should look for her. Chan asks for the test result, but Lusa says that she needs more time to analyze everything. On their way home, Chan tells his sister that he doesn't want to continue seeing the doctor, because it seems like nothing came out of their session. Chan is disappointed because he thinks that even his own sister doesn't understand his situation. Later that day, Lusa calls Jib to inform him of the outcome of her session with Chan. She asks if he knows someone named Darai, but he blatantly denies it. 
He suddenly pretends that he's busy and needs to hang up the phone. Lusa searches Dara Rai's name on the website, only to find she actually belongs to the psychiatric department of the same university hospital, where Jib and her husband work. That evening, Chan is intrigued by a medical book opening itself. He sees the pictures of humans' different internal organs, muscles, and bones. As he touches the book, his arms and face turn like what's shown in the book. He wakes up and realizes that he's just hallucinating, and the bruised-shaped hand on his wrist appears again. Soon after, he sees a man guiding a woman towards the room beside the cabinet. He follows them and sees the name Dararai on the woman's name plate. The door slightly opens, and when he peeks in, a morbid face appears and grabs his arms. He falls to the floor as he resists, then the door closes. He sees a ray in his hand, but he's surprised when someone tries to grab it. He then sees himself standing as he holds the ring, but the door in front of him is already gone. He drops the ring when suddenly he hears the call of his sister. He then asks his sister if it's okay to move the cabinet, but she doesn't agree because it's not their house. His sister worriedly tells him that Dararai might not be real, and is only part of his hallucinations. But he swears he'll find evidence to prove that she's real. The following day, Lusa goes to the university hospital to look for Dararai, but she isn't there. So she just talks to Dararai's teaching assistant. The assistant shares with her the rumor that Dararai is a witch, because she reveals a rude student's unconscious memory of being beaten up as a child. Because of fear, the students start to withdraw from her class. What's worse, Dararai doesn't go to work now, and no one knows where she is. Lusa wonders why they didn't look for her, and asks who recommends her for the position. The assistant answers that it's her husband, who brought Dararai to the university hospital. When Lusa leaves the university hospital, Sean arrives. He then sees the black cat, sitting on the student assistant's chair. During dinner, Lusa can't hide her disappointment with her husband. She tells him that she visits the university hospital, where she's able to talk to Dararai's student assistant. The husband becomes dismissive by diverting the conversation toward the opera show they watched in the past, which was being shown on the television at the moment. Lusa recalls it's the same night that he had left her and their child alone. Speechless, the professor suddenly leaves. It turns out the opera show the family watched is the same show that Chan watched in the past. That same night, the student assistant is closing the university's facility when the black cat jumps back inside the hall, so she follows it. She walks further inside and is startled when a tree swiftly moves. She looks closer at the tree, when someone suddenly grabs her shoulders. She shouts while walking backward, and stumbles on the chain barrier. As she hits the locker, the butterflies come alive, and start to build in number and attack her. Suddenly, the ghost that Chan sees in his hallucinations appears. Barbed wires suddenly wrap around her and pierce her skin. It's revealed that Chan sees the events through his nightmare. When he wakes up, he immediately goes to the bathroom and throws up on the sink. Once again, he sees the bruise shaped like hand on his wrist that disappears in a short while. The next day, Lusa notices her husband hasn't gone home since yesterday. Lusa and Sean find out the police recovered the dead body of the teaching assistant in the museum. Lusa calls Jib right away and asks what happened, while Sean hurriedly goes to the crime scene and pretends to be a forensic doctor. As he checks the corpse, it suddenly moves, which gives him a fright. Sean blames himself for the assistant's death because he wasn't able to do what Dararai wanted. Lusa then meets Jib at the hospital's morgue. He confesses that her husband had an affair with Dararai, which left her speechless. It's then revealed the corpse has a name tag, Dararai. Later, Chan calls Lusa's clinic and finds out that she's at the university hospital. So he hurriedly goes there. But unfortunately, she has already left. He then sees Jib, but to his surprise, the black cat is beside him. So he warns him not to tell anyone about Dararai, otherwise he'll be the next victim. At home, Lusa confronts her husband about his affair, but he assures her that Dararai will never be in between them anymore. It turns out, when the professor expresses that he'd like to end his affair with Dararai, she blackmails him that she'll expose their intimate pictures to his wife, which is shockingly the same scenario that Chan dreamed of earlier. Meanwhile, Chan is having hallucinations again. While he's eating, he sees a fetus-like creature on the spoon. In fear, he flips the table, but when he checks it, there's nothing. He then turns on the TV after taking a bath, but he's surprised to see the ghost appear on TV saying that she's Dararai and he should look for her. In confusion, Chan begs her to leave him alone and stop killing people. Suddenly, Jib is shown on the TV, walking in the corridor of the hospital. He sees the black cat, licking blood on the floor. Thereafter, he notices blood dripping from the ceiling down to his glasses. When he looks up, the ghost who killed the assistant is there. Instantly, it rains hot boil in blood, and it drowns and burns Jib at the same time. Chan is able to see this as well through his nightmare, while he falls asleep during a bath. He immediately runs and looks for his sister. He then sees the black cat entering the door beside the cabinet. He peeps through the door gap and sees a man dissecting and chopping his sister. 
When the man looks at him, Chan is stunned to find that it's actually himself. He's then pushed inside the room. A distorted voice of Darite echoes, telling Chan the same thing will happen to him, and he should find her. He then finds the ring, and a burnt picture of Darite and the professor. He realizes that they are the ones who he sees in his nightmares. He immediately goes to the room, and checks the wallet that he found in the opera house. He's shocked to see the professor's ID and her sister's picture inside. Chan thinks that his sister has an affair with the professor, and he's the owner of the house where they stay. That same night, Loser receives a call from the police, that Jib is found dead in a pool of strong acid in the university hospital. Lusa bursts into tears at his death. The officer gives her a card found on the scene with her number written on it. That's the same calling card that Jib gave to Chan when he first met him. Lusa looks at Dararai's address from the hospital records, then drives there while it's raining heavily. She goes inside and finds the burnt picture of her husband and Dararai. It's revealed that the house where Chan leaves is Dararai's house and not the professor's. Chan goes to Lusa's home trying to reveal that her husband has affairs with Dararai and his sister. He calls Lusa, but she says that she isn't home. Lusa immediately goes home, because she's afraid that Chan will hurt her daughter. Chan hurriedly runs into the house, when he sees that the ghost and Lusa's daughter are together. Luckily, the daughter and the maid are able to hide inside the closet. Chan goes downstairs and sees Lusa. He tells her that her husband had killed Dararai and everyone who knows their affair. And now, he needs to see the professor, because he's with his sister, and he's afraid that he'll also kill her. Lusa shouts at him, saying that he's the one who killed everyone. Lusa continues to tell him that he's not Chan, because the real Chan is already dead, and stays inside the drawer number 19 of the hospital morgue. But the man's hysterical and denies everything. When he looks at Lusa, she suddenly turns into a ghost. He grabs a metal, and pierces into it. Lusa's daughter witnesses everything, and cries out loud. The man goes to the hospital morgue, and finds the real body of Chan in drawer number 19. At this time, it's revealed that everything Chan did from the start, was actually done by the professor. The professor is the one who goes to the opera house, and the black coat is actually his. He's also the one who visits Jib and Lusa for consultation. He's the one who killed everyone, who knew his secret affair. His recent victim is his wife, whom he peers with metal during his hallucinations. Luckily, she survives and is recovering. The professor suffers from a mental disease, thinking that he's Chan. The real Chan is Dararai's brother, who died because of severe bleeding. Dararai asks the professor to keep her brother's body in the hospital morgue, because she wants to be near him since he's her only family. Soon after, the police arrive and arrest the professor. Unfortunately, it's proven in the court that he has a mental disorder, where he creates another personality and sometimes has an imaginary person. The sister whom he thinks is real, is actually an imaginary person. The court finally decides to put the trial on hold, and just continue once the professor recovers. On the way to the mental hospital, when the driver plays his song, the professor starts hallucinating again. He runs out of the car as he sees the ghost inside. He's almost run over by a van with metal poles. Unfortunately, the metal poles flee and pierce his body. It's finally revealed that after the Dararai's threats, the professor drugged her drink, then cut her body into pieces because he doesn't want her to expose their infidelity. However, before Dararai collapses, she hypnotizes the professor that whenever he hears their favorite song, he'll remember everything about her, including the good and the bad. It explains why he hallucinates after the opera show, and when the driver plays the music on the way to the hospital, because the song was cursed by Dararai. What's more, when he dissects Dararai's body, he finds out she's pregnant with their child, which also explains why a fetus haunts him in his nightmare. The movie ends with the professor lying in the operating room where the doctors are trying to save him. The ghost Dararai forgives him, then clicks her fingers as a signal to remove her hypnosis. The professor wakes up and becomes conscious, but he has to suffer the severe pain from Dararai's revenge. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.